The scheduler button launches a window that allows you to manage scheduled tasks that belong to batch files, visual cut, or data link viewer. You can see that this task just kicked in and says running, and in a few seconds it will move back to ready. This task runs every minute. For each task you can see the name, its status, its trigger type, a tag which is a piece of text enclosed in square brackets within the task description. Let me show you that. So here's this piece of text, and back in the grid it is reflected in this column which allows you to categorize tasks in a useful way. You can see the repeat frequency, the next runtime, the last result, whether the task involves a batch file, the action, which is what this task triggers, and whether the task runs in a hidden window. I can edit any task by double-clicking or by right-clicking and selecting Edit Task. For example, for this task, I'm going to change it to run with highest privileges. If I click OK, I would be prompted to authenticate. That change is reflected now in the saved task. I can confirm that by going back to this task, and I can see that it's turned on. Periodically, you may want to disable, uh, on a temporary basis, all the tasks that are enabled. You can do this with Suspend and Unsuspend. So right now I'm going to select Suspend All Enabled Tasks. And after authenticating, I can see a list here that says that these two tasks have been suspended. That means that they are now disabled with the text suspended in the task description. I can see that by double-clicking one of them. And you can see that text here. Now that allows me to then unsuspend or enable all suspended tasks I'll do it right now. And it is useful because all the originally disabled tasks are left disabled. So it's a nice way of temporarily disabling and then later on enabling tasks. For example, when you need to uninstall and reinstall some software and you don't want the tasks to get triggered during that temporary period. Another useful thing to do is to change a password. So this option would prompt you for a user ID. You would then provide the new password, and all the tasks that belong to that user would be updated with a new password. No need to do this manually, one by one. If you move Visual Cut to another machine, you can export all the tasks to XML, and then you can import them to the new machine using these menu options. The Add Task menu option would allow you to create a new task, but there's a more streamlined way of doing that from within Visual Cut, and you will see that in a later segment. Right-click menu options include the ability to run the task on demand, disable it, so I'm going to do it right now, and then I'm going to re-enable it. In a similar way, you can suspend or unsuspend a task. You saw the option of editing a task. I can also rename or clone a task, delete, view description, and export the XML for just one task. If a task involves a batch file, then these four menu options would be enabled, and you'd be able to just edit the batch file. You'd be able to open the containing folder where the batch file resides. Let's open the properties of this task, and notice that the action for it is to simply run a batch file. If you do not provide a starting folder, that could cause the task to fail under certain rare scenarios. Because of that, this right-click menu option allows you to add a starting folder. I'm going to click on that, and if I go back, you will see that now, under Actions, a starting folder is specified, and that can fix failure scenarios. The other right-click menu option that you see here is to change the batch file to run as an invisible process. So I'm going to click on that. I would have to authenticate. And the message says that the call, the action, is now switched to running a script called invisible.vbs that then call the batch file. And that approach encapsulates the call to the batch file inside an invisible window. The uh, generation of this file, the placing of that file where the batch file is located, all happened automatically by using this right-click menu. Finally, in this grid, you can use smaller and larger fonts you can decide which columns are visible. So for example, if I don't want to see the action column, I can right-click here and I can say remove. 
if I want to bring it back, I can go to the column chooser and bring that column as well as several other columns here that are currently hidden back into the grid. You can change how the grid is grouped, you can change how it's sorted, but this gives you an overview of what managing and monitoring tasks using this dialog allows you to do. To demonstrate scheduling a report in Visual Cut, I'll run this simple report. It has no data source, but it has a date parameter and a string parameter. Because there's no data source, there are zero records. It is set to export to PDF. I'll click this button and this dialog allows me to tweak the command line. At this point, it shows only the date parameters. The assumption is that I may want to tweak this and change it to, say, yesterday, today, start of month, minus one, all those date constants that are described in the user manual in detail. Because the report has no data source and it will always have zero records, I better change this option. So with uppercase hyphen E, processing would occur even if Visual Cut finds zero records. The more important aspects of this dialog are the scheduling options here at the bottom. I would recommend that you do not schedule directly the command line. If you do that, then you would need to have a scheduled task for each report. Instead, insert the command line into a batch file, and if you select an existing batch file, the command line would be inserted into that existing batch file, allowing you to have one scheduled task that triggers multiple reports, as long as all those reports need to run under the same scheduling logic, say, all reports that need to run at 8 o'clock in the morning on Mondays. So I'll click this button to create a batch file. I'll call it test2.cmd. And when I click open, it's going to ask me if I want to see that newly created batch file in Notepad. I'll click yes. And besides opening up this Notepad, it also opened up a dialog that allows me to set up a trigger for the scheduled task. But let me go back into the batch file, and I'm going to change the date parameter to yesterday, close and save this batch file, and let's attend to the scheduled task now. So we're in the process of creating a scheduled task to run this batch file, and I'll set it up to run weekly, say on Monday at 8, and that's really all there is to it. I'm going to click OK. I forgot to provide a task name in the dialog, so it prompts me here. I'm going to call it test1 and I need to authenticate. And there it is, test one is available to me right now and it's enabled. Let's see the settings that were provided for that scheduled task. The action, of course, is running this batch file. And you can see that by default, Visual Cut already took care of providing a starting folder which avoids failures. The only thing that you were really prompted to do was to specify the trigger. Other aspects, such as conditions, say, wake up the computer to run this task, run whether the user is logged on or not, and run with highest privilege, hidden window, various settings such as allowing the task to run on demand, what should happen if this particular scheduled task gets triggered again while the older instance is still running. The option here is to not start the new instance. Instead, allow the older instance to finish its work. Things such as what should happen if the task fails. The default here is to restart every five minutes and try again five times. Uh, should the task be killed if it runs for more than X number of hours? All of those settings were set by the Visual Cut logic, but you can revisit all those settings here, change if you want to change something. For example, I can change the eight hours to one hour. In other words, if the task runs for more than one hour, kill it. I can click OK, and I can authenticate again, and the task is now updated. So this is a very streamlined approach to creating a new scheduled task for a report.